wearing any footwear. <laughs> well, I don't know. Actually, it's not too bad because I'm wearing my hey dudes. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're hey dudes, so they're hey oh dudes. God. Hey. All, All right, right, let's get this shit started. <laughs> oh, so we All should right. do the show? All right. It's a All nice right. mic you got there, though. Thank you. A little jealous. Yeah. I want a mic. Can you get on that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, and welcome to The Hey Show. This is a video podcast. Uh, fuck. See, right off the right bat. Right off the bat. Nice. Yeah, right. This is a video podcast uh, for new jiu-jitsu and MMA athletes. This is not a show for experts. This is a show for someone that uh, wrist locks somebody and will not tap, and then they're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to just keep wrist locking people and figure it out. <laughs> That's just what this show's And for. we're not remaking episode three. No. This is the first run. First run. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start off today. With, uh, first segment is going to be just news and notes. So there was a couple big things that have happened in the um, grappling scene. The biggest one is one championship assigned to deal with Amazon Prime. Uh, they are not only doing uh, unique MMA matches with tie rules and things like that. Yeah. They're also going to start doing straight grappling rules. So, the first question to you guys is, uh, we know that uh, Mikey's there, we know Gordon's there, we know Bichet is there. Who are some people that you would like to see in one championship? Myself. <laughs> well, we would love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I only want to grapple. So, I know that um, it is in the cage and they do use the cage. Like, you can grapple off the cage. It's no gi, though, right? It is no gi. Yeah. Um, but that gives the MMA guys an extreme advantage. So I would like to see an MMA guy go against a pure jiu-jitsu guy. Um, and, and it could be any, any one of them. Like I would like to, um, just, I, I think they've done a few, but I would like to see uh, Gordon Ryan go against an MMA guy and have to fight off the cage. And I'm sure like he, you know, he's going to know he's going to have to fight off the cage. So he's going to have to practice that and learn that and do it, which won't be a problem, but I want to see how it works. Because I think it's you're gonna have to, to eliminate the guard pulling without connection. Oh yes. If you're gonna be able to utilize, because because right. otherwise you're just gonna go sit in the middle of the cage and then right. wait. And then what's the point? You yeah. know, I mean, the cage is big enough that it doesn't mm-hmm. matter at that point. You what if there's no it. guard pulling? Is that just too? Well, the so we watched Mikey's match. Yeah. And he just started right off the bat and yeah. just sat guard. Yeah. Right. So clearly, right now it's allowed, and and that's. But I mean, a, do you think it would be better if they weren't allowed to pull guard at all? Or do you think I that mean, just I, takes away too much? I think you would definitely... No, I don't think so. I, I definitely think that it makes you have to utilize your tools. But here's the thing, right? If you're going to get the submission, I don't know how long the rounds are. Right? I think is it it's one round? Minute, one, is it one ten minute one round? One ten minute round? Yeah, if I remember. Um, you know, so I mean, it's like, well, if you just want to pull guard, what's the penalty? Do you get stood back up? Are do there you, points? No, it's just decision. It's so, either submission so or decision. only decision. So Kinda it's probably like, like a who's, new, who's number yeah, one correct. a little bit, like yeah. who looks like the they, momentum sort of. They've also um, announced that they are a prime sponsorship now for ADCC. So I'm wondering if they're, they're going, going to incorporate start and start incorporating the ADCC rules. I think if you want the, that? the, you know, that's kind of what we went that what? It's the most second, exciting format. The I second think. video we did on the Hay Show, um, we went over uh, closeouts. Right, right, right. Yeah. absolutely. So, kind of goes in the same thing. You can't. You are you looking at the future of jujitsu? Um, you have to have entertainment. Right. So you know nothing against Mikey's match. Once they started getting in the leg entanglements, it was a pretty good back and forth. But for fans, especially in America, you know, I mean, I think overseas the fans utilize the martial art a little bit more, and they're more respectful of it. <coughs> in America, the more it comes into America. You're yeah. not going to want to see that part of the sport. I was actually going to just bring that up because I, I uh, my daughter's competed in Japan, so we went to a JBJJF. It's dead quiet. Mm-hmm. No one's talking. Everyone's quiet. It's like pride. And everyone <laughs> is concentrating. There's no cheering. It's a very unique setting. So I absolutely 100% agree with you that that environment's going to be way different than the United States. So then you have to ask your question, are they going to run in the United States or are they going to run more in Asia where, you know, the crowd, obviously we know from the matches not too long ago in right. UFC, the crowd influences all of those things. Yeah. I also think, too, to make jiu-jitsu exciting, it's, it's hard for someone who's not super well-versed in grappling to, like, see somebody on the bottom and guard and be like, to know what's going on. But right. everyone can see someone get taken down and instantly understand what that is. You know, you know, actually, you guys just raised a really good question, so let's just go around to all three of you. 
what is a like a rule or not a rule that you would like to see in this one championship to make it more exciting to grow the sport? Because I know that's a different question, you know, like then just what is a rule that you want or whatever. This is to make this more exciting so that, you know, our sport can yeah. grow and be better off and whatnot. I think, uh, uh, oh, go ahead, I was going to say, I think eliminating just them being able to guard pull without it being like a flying submission or something might make it a little more exciting. Now, the counter to that, though, is uh, the who's number one fight between Craig Jones and Pedro Marino. Pedro Marino, is that his name? I think so. Uh, that Sounds was good. a pure wrestling match where there was not a oh, single yeah. takedown. It was not just a, boring. And, and one time Craig somewhat pulled guard and then stood right, right, right back Yeah, I guess up. you're right. What happens then if it's just a stalemate on the yeah. feet like that? Yeah, and same thing happened basically with... Um, yeah, uh, nobody wants to watch a 10-minute yeah. match of elder, fighting either. Yeah, right, horrible. the Elder cruz Nicky rod fight uh, on that same card was also fairly boring because it was just... It was all hand fighting the whole time. But to be fair, is that something commitment. that you should like plan against? Because I mean, there's terribly boring MMA fights too. True. You know, I think that's just a problem you can't really entirely yeah, you eliminate. Gotta, I think it comes down to the promoter and how well that's they can match true. up matchups. Right. That's true. Uh, you know, I mean, it's anything. You match up the wrong fighters in the cage, and you're going to have a boring match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think that guard pulling is okay. Yeah. But again, I think it's the manner of which you guard pull. Right. And I, I think. Um, I don't know what what uh, organization is doing this, but even if there's not points, right, there needs to be emphasis on what is a value, okay. right? Like right. If you pull guard, it maybe needs to take the refs and they need to say, you know, you're giving up, you're scared to wrestle with this guy, or you're scared to do whatever with this guy, and that's that's taking you down right off the bat. You need to do something really good mm -hmm. to recover that. Right. Um, if you're not going to have like any points. Like how they gave the other guy two points in some tournaments for pulling guard. Like if I pulled guard, they give you two points. Right. right. You know, something needs to be in the ref's uh, decision that's mm -hmm. saying, you know, okay, if you're giving up this dominant position, that's okay. You, you, if you're getting taken down, you're getting whatever. But you're, you're negative, you know, five or negative ten in our thought process right mm -hmm. now. And you need to do something equal to come back from that. Right. You can't just throw a submission and lose that submission and think – okay, because you did pull safely or whatever, right. that you can win the decision. Like, you need to really come back with something. So what I thought, um, and this is something that they are starting to somewhat do in MMA, and I would love to see it done all the time, is in between rounds, they, they say, you know what the score is. Yeah, yeah open the, scoring. Open scoring. Yeah, yeah, I do like that too. It, I, you know, but I guess I if it's just one ten match round, round, that's what I'm saying. Number one does that, right? Yeah, they do. They do like midway through the match, they say um, the judges favor this guy, and then a second time the judge favor this guy. I don't know how well the opponents can hear that. So I that kind of goes back to your question about what you should add. Why not have three three minute grappling yes. matches? Yeah, three right. Rounds. 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 Yeah. Three three minute rounds, and every time someone gets to come in and you get to coach them and you get to know right there they're announcing who already is being favored. Is three minutes long enough though to get a position and work through it to get this mission? It may. But here's five. the thing, right? What's more fun, right? Going and it watching a ten exciting. minute match. I guarantee the three minute okay, match would be more exciting. Or going and watching the king of the mat two minute matches. Right. Yeah. Where you got two minutes to make shit happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, sometimes you get more excitement out of two or three minutes with a rest. Mm -hmm. than you do out of a 10-minute match of eight minutes of stalling. I think it would definitely increase the excitement, the yeah. multiple shorter rounds. With and you get, to watch, you get to watch coaches go in there and talk to their students right. about jujitsu ju right. and actually tell them what's yeah. going on in their strategies, and the crowd gets to actually see right. Yeah, I that. like that. I think that's a good idea. I like that, too. So we've decided that when we're talking about this, it's got to be decided through two ways, either making some rules changes like this, or you have to incentivize the fighters with big payouts on submissions. That's true. Right? You get a submission finish, you get fifty thousand dollars or whatever number that's they the get. That's the number it is. It's that, fifty grand. Yeah. That's is, a pretty is, big is it, bonus. Well, for the, that's for submission of the night, not oh, okay. just for sub. Everyone oh, subs okay. doesn't get but for chasing a sub. You should be incentivized. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. That helps the you just got the sub of the night. Right. If well. you get if you get the win, you get your normal fight bonus, whatever it but is. Yeah. But if you get a sub, you get a finish. It could be even really entertaining if it was like, look, if you pass the guy's guard, you get a grand. Look, if you mount the guy, you get a grand. You get points for every. Yeah, maybe maybe instead of points, you just scored. get money. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> like that would then, incentivize. But then me. you're you're advancing the position constantly yeah, for money value. Like, yeah. look, if you get a legit takedown, you get a five hundred dollar bonus. Yeah, you know, like 
then it's like, shit, you know, maybe I do want to wrestle. Yeah. Maybe I want to take the guy down three times and make $1,500. Yeah. Or, you know, and you could say, well, look, instead of giving someone $50,000, maybe you're only giving $10,000 away and you could do it for five matches now. Yeah. And yep. now you have really good incentives to drive uh, people to do stuff. And that could be pretty wild. I think that's definitely the thing lacking in grappling is the entertainment. They got to put that focus on making the matches entertaining to watch. For I mean, even, who even imagine, a, imagine a tournament that you went to and it was like, look, you get $100 or $50 for every takedown you do. Yeah. You know, like, like holy shit. 100 bucks for a sub or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean. And again, we're, let's, let's reiterate because there'll be some purists that just absolutely hate all of this. <laughs> we're, we're not talking about, you know, competition sport jiu-jitsu we're talking about super fights right. we're talking about, about the professionalism of the right. sport yes right so the, so i so mean you can put butts in seats to yeah watch the thing that people are going to come to watch you know yeah, like yeah. this could be implemented at one at adcc all these things that are getting lots of viewerships because you're getting the viewership money to come in so are we saying that Hey Show just saved jiu-jitsu? We might be. Yeah, we <laughs> are definitely going to save jiu-jitsu it's actually, it's actually as long a, as you send us money. Right. It's actually, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful segue into what I was going to actually do awesome. next, which is the match that a lot of us are wanting to see, and then one of us here at this table absolutely does not want to see. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, there is a rumor that George St. Pierre has said that he has no issue of doing a straight grappling match with Khabib. Now, on PFL, we just saw that, uh, man, his name just blank, Rory McDonald yeah. uh, was in there with Donaher. Man, and that, that, he's mother, there. that dude used yeah. to take some beatings. Yes, he did. <laughs> Rory, and God. you know what's funny is if you watch that, because I actually went back and watched his match, he's like going to go straight ground. Yeah. Like, that's his goal. You could tell, like, okay, well, if I'm going to keep doing this, I, I can't take beatings anymore. Right. So he's, you know, he took the guy very systematically out and just went to his back and choked him out and you know won some money so yeah. that's the way i look at it. but so the um george st pierre and khabib grappling match we don't know what the rule set would be i'm just simply asking you just yay or nay you want to watch it and then if you want to watch it who's going to win i 100 percent want to watch it and the guy that loves jiu-jitsu and wants to see a good match i think or is saying GSP, but the realistic in me is thinking Khabib. But I looked up their ages. So um, Khabib is um, like, yeah, he's 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 in his thirties for sure, thirty two, thirty five, and um, GSP is only right around forty, not yeah. even there yet. So the, their age difference really not that big. No, I think GSP is a little bigger than Khabib, isn't he? Uh, he's not a taller, at, not, not at right the now. current moment because uh, Khabib, since he stopped fighting, is just like GSP's hey, he's actually pretty cut small. I feel like GSP in has stayed in great shape even yes, after no, he stopped for sure. competing. Yes, sure, All I think all these look. Anyone that does this level, when you make it to the one percent, you're gonna stay in shape because you form these habits that you've done for ten years. He's looking a little little soft. What? (laughs) You should tell that to his face. That's sure Brandon Wells. He lives, <laughs> he lives. He lives above Appalachian. Oh gosh! Look. You <laughs> really doxed him. I was gonna joke dox him. You really doxed him. You I did. Oh man! I have a fourth street. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Oh. Okay. Uh, age difference is uh, Khabib is thirty three. Okay. Saint Pierre is forty. Okay. Right at forty. Okay. Khabib destroys GSP. Destroys. Wow. Destroys. That's Do you not even a match. Do you want to watch it? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll watch it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very boring match. Hi. Uh, okay. Depending on how long the match goes, what is it? Ten minutes? Yeah, let's say one ten minute round. Or it's gonna be GSP getting taken down. It's gonna be GSP getting smashed for six minutes until. Smash? I mean, it's not like he's throwing elbows at him. He's gonna get smashed. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna smash his legs. He's gonna climb him up to mount. GSP's either gonna give up his back, which I assume he's gonna give up his back when he does I think... it. Go ahead. Um, and, and then he's going to choke GSP. Yeah. I think it's hard to disagree that Khabib probably would win, but the the, uh, the fan in me definitely what is wants GSP, GSP Look, win. what is GSP going to win with? Well, it, it's hard for me to, yeah, to see the guy that's never victory, been defeated but on the ground. I think, I don't know. I think if, if Khabib can't get that leg wrap from the double like he usually gets, where then he's just climbed slowly up until he gets to the tri- the mounted triangle or the mounted arm bar or whatever, which he finishes a lot of people I mean, with. You guys keep saying, well, Khabib can't hit. Yeah. But GSP can't hit either. <laughs> well, yeah. I know. So now you have one of the best 
pressure passing grapplers in the planet probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. holding on to GSP. And I'm not saying that GSP is not good because clearly he's good. Who do you good. think would probably have a better closed guard, GSP or Khabib? Um, you know, that's a good question. Probably GSP. Yeah. I think so too, and I think Khabib's probably more likely to get the takedown, and I think therefore GSP's probably going to end up in a, a but, guard of some sort. But what's he going to sub? Yeah, Khabib I know. It, it's hard to imagine. He's not going to try and him. He's not going to try headlock him. Do you think GSP can get to to, but, yeah, to GSP, guard and get a sweep or something? And no, then win? I don't think you're going to sweep Khabib. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, and, right? <laughs> play devil's advocate, George St. Pierre, what uh, close to being uh, Olympic qualifier for Canada. For wrestling? Chad's going to make a Canada joke here, I imagine. No, I mean, he was <laughs> a great then, wrestler, but, but that was also, a long time ago. He also didn't do any wrestling through his adolescence at all. He only started wrestling after he got into the mixed martial arts. Yeah. And, and then, he was still one of the best to ever do it. And now training with Ten years Donner. ago. Yeah. He was the best to do it with jiu-jitsu. <laughs> But wasn't he, really relevant he, in the cage. He, he even out wrestled some like um, like national champions, I believe, like Josh Koscheck, who are like multi multi time NCAA champions, I believe. But and there's he still levels, them, you know. I, there absolutely is. Like you look at it, like I can't remember what the major wrestling match was a few years ago. Jordan Burroughs and someone yeah, else, and Askren. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and it was like he smashed him. you know, it's like oh well, this guy's really good. We all know Askren's great, but there's levels. Yeah. You know, and, and GSP can beat this guy, and that's great, and that guy's good too, but it's... But do you think pure jiu-jitsu, Khabib's pure jiu-jitsu, is better than GSP's? No. But that's what this is. This is just a pure jiu-jitsu match. There's yeah, no but, striking. But, but there's wrestling. Well, yeah. If there was no wrestling... Well, that's what I mean, pure grappling. Yeah. Edit, edit, edit. All right, so we've had some technical issues with episode three. This is our third take on it, and... Uh, Mostly this is Brandon's fault, not that I'm blaming anyone, but uh, it's probably because he plays volleyball, yes. and uh, we're going to forgive him for that, and we're going to get started and back on track with episode three. All right, so we ended with the George St. Pierre Khabib grappling match, so we're just going to leave it at... Uh, I never got cut off. Yeah, and then we're just going to, at the very end, say, hey, who's going to win this? And, uh, Khabib. And then... <laughs> Can't even get the question out. So, Chad yeah, wants to watch it. He thinks Khabib's going to win. Ronnie? I want to watch it, and I think Khabib's going to win, but I'm rooting real hard for GSP. All right. I'm in the same boat as Ronnie. I really want to see it, and I really hope GSP wins, but I'm holding my breath on it. All right, let's get away from that hellscape. Segment. <laughs> All right. So let's get on to Mailbag. This is the laziest segment we do. This is where we take questions from viewers or friends or whoever, and we ask them to our experts. Chad's going to make the joke of who the experts are. Brandon. Okay. All right. Hell so yeah. the first, uh, the first zero uh, and a hero, the same first, episode. The first, the Redemption. First, the first question is: weightlifting plans and strength work. Like, what are good reps slash sets, uh, set schemes, and the benefits to certain workouts? Well, I'm a huge workout fiend, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working. No shit. Gonna... I feel like this is deja vu. Like we've done this before. Like twice yeah, before. No shit. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I'm going to say the same thing that I've said hold, twice before. Hold on. Can I interrupt you real quick? Sure. We were so excited the first night. And that's right. This has been multiple times we've tried this. We were so excited. We were like, fuck yeah, that's the best episode we had. This is awesome. Yeah. And then we looked at it and we were we like. The third best episode on episode three. Yeah. We were like, holy fuck. That's the dinner oh, record. lost it all. Yeah. So um, if sometimes if we. Look, if you're really good this, at videography. <laughs> Podcasting. Uh, if you have a lot of money, just contact us. Yeah. We would appreciate it. <coughs> Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, we can use Dwayne. Just anyone named just Dwayne. Just yeah. any yeah. Dwayne. Any Dwayne. All so, Dwayne. I apologize. I, I interrupt you, Chad. Go ahead. Oh, I don't even know. Can we talk about weightlifting? Yeah, weightlifting. Uh, so, yeah, basically, the way we covered it before is I think it depends really heavily on how much time you have in a day and what you're doing with your life. And are you going to be, are you, look. If you're not a full-time competitor, right? If you want to be a world, you you want to be a world champion, you want to be at the top level of MMA, you have to train six, seven days a week, and you have to do eight hours a day. And when you can do that, you can have multiple training sessions. But I really think the main focus needs to stay to stay with you're doing MMA or jiu-jitsu, Right, you need to make sure that you're doing more MMA and more right. jujitsu than weightlifting. The weightlifting supplements correct the, the jujitsu or the the martial arts. And I don't necessarily think lifting heavy weights, and it's my personal opinion, is the correct way. I think your Unless body you're to go up. 
I think your body workout, your body routine workouts, and your low weight, high rep, building those functional muscles that you don't think about. It's not just your bicep, it's everything connected yeah. to your shoulder, your bicep, your forearms, all that has to be tested at high reps with high intensity. Um, so just doing five or 10 lifts of max weight isn't gonna build your muscle functional functionality and you're gonna use up way more oxygen in those muscles by trying to trying to bulk up like that. So. Yeah, the only um, the only time that I can see that you would want to have a larger frame and have larger size muscle is if you are going to be someone that is going to compete at um, low time limit and uh, um, going to just take someone down and hold them down like a five minute round where you can, you know, that's all you're gonna do. You're never gonna do 10 minute or submission only stuff. I'm only going to take someone down, hold them down, get my points and just keep them there. Then it's beneficial to be bigger and stronger. But, cause then you can, you can train yourself to um, last for five minutes. Whereas if you're looking at those long, like the black belts and IBJJF are going, what? How long? 10, 10 minute matches. 10 minute matches and then your submission only are 10 minutes normally. ADCC, the big ones are 15. You got you got to be able to go that long that amount of time so for four matches it, for four matches yeah. so then it gets tougher to do that so it there's only a very small niche where you need to be huge and strong to do jujitsu the rest of the time you're right you're better off doing body weight and um, I don't think people realize and I've put a lot of work into this um, just because you do low weight doesn't mean you're weaker than someone no, who does high weight no absolutely weights. not. Um, it really matters on how well you train your muscles. Um, it's the, the support muscles, not necessarily the primary muscles, right? Like the primary muscles are great. If somebody is sitting right over me and my elbows are like this, I can do this easily. Mm -hmm. But jiu-jitsu doesn't work that way and MMA doesn't work that way. Sometimes you have to be here. Sometimes right. you have to be here. Sometimes you have to be here, right? Like, and your muscles have to function at all those areas with the same strength. Right. Um, so I, I really think that you can almost be a better fighter or a better jiu-jitsu practitioner if you can really build the stability areas. Uh, and you can do that by really keeping a low weight. You know, when you keep a high weight, you have to be very careful with that yes. high weight and exactly what you're going to do and exactly how you're going to move mm -hmm. or you're going to hurt something. Exactly. Um, if you can build the stability up with low weight and high rep, and all over your body, you're going to be, I think, more um, versatile. Vers versatile. Yeah. yeah, in different areas. Um, that's just my opinion. I actually heard a podcast with um, I can't remember her first name. It was, uh, Bishop. Oh, yeah. Bishop. Yeah. Bishop. Yeah. Uh, she actually said that um, she was trying to get into fitness and things like that, and she ended up doing cross training. And she said that, or CrossFit. CrossFit. And they said all of a sudden. Um, there was a CrossFit athlete that was like looking at her and being like, oh, I can do what you do. I'm a CrossFit athlete. And she's like, okay. And you know, she came in, did jits and got beat Destroyed. up. Right. And then she's like, hey, I'm quitting because I'm getting hurt at jujitsu and what I want to do is CrossFit. Okay, that makes sense. She said that the same experience she had is she's doing CrossFit, and getting she's hurt. getting hurt. And then, oh, I'm getting hit for jujitsu, and that's really what I want to do. Right. So well, it definitely makes sense what you're saying. And I don't want to hate on CrossFit, uh, but at the same time, you anytime when I say you know doing high rep, um, like more reps and low weight, uh, it still needs to have control. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, like yeah, sometimes absolutely. with some of the CrossFit things, it's a really big jerking motion. Yeah, and right. you're putting your body into these places where those your body's not designed to jerk that way. In one wrong jerk, and look, if you do it, maybe it, whoever designed that workout really studied that workout and they got their body to do it correctly but an average person jumping in there right and doing that th that way that they do it mm -hmm. you're asking to throw something out of alignment with your body mm -hmm. so when you're doing these things you need to be looking it's just kind of like stretching right like when you're doing anything you need to be looking at every way that you're moving those arms and every way that it feels you know and, and listen to your body and communicate with your body so that you're building it correctly and not constantly injuring it. Yeah, it's the same with jiu-jitsu when you get those guys that come in and they, they come in, they learn one thing, and then they just roll as hard as they can. 
they're probably going to either hurt someone or get hurt themselves. That's the same premise. You need to come in and start slow. Make sure you know all the movements. Make sure you know what movements can hurt you, what movements can hurt other people, and know when and where to stop on that. And that's the thing that most people just don't do. They just come in and, I'm going to just roll as hard as I can. And it's just the worst possible thing you can do. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question we had. Another view, uh, viewer asked, as a white belt, I've dislocated two, uh, I've had two dislocated fingers, a torn rotator cuff, and a few broken toes. Is there any way to train hard and compete often but not rack up a lot of injuries? Man, how's this guy breaking multiple toes? <laughs> this uh, little piggy went to bark it. <laughs> This little piggy stayed home. I was going to make the joke, Ethan, like he rolls with Ethan. He's right? taking, Ethan he's taking toe, toe right? holds to a whole new yeah. level. <laughs> Not, not all the toes, just one of the toes. Yeah. No, uh, you know, I mean, it's a good question. Of course, that's the, uh, you know, like I think uh, Robert asked this question and Kevin answered this question with, when you figure that out, let, let the world of jiu-jitsu know. And, and that's kind of true. But, um, you know, the first time we did this, Ronnie had a good segment on it. Um, I'll go over the same thing, my two, my two parts. Uh, picking the right training partners or the right rolling partners is very important. When you're new and you're a white belt and a blue belt, you don't really get that choice, sadly. You're just like, go roll with whoever and quit being a biatch, get mm -hmm. off the wall, blah, blah, blah. But you have to start knowing, and everyone that's been in jiu-jitsu for a year has met the one person that's in every academy that hurts everybody. Mm -hmm. um, every academy has them, and whether, that, whether it's intentional or not, sometimes, look, I'm not hating on the person because sometimes it's not intentional. No, yeah. I mean, clearly Ethan's not going out trying to hurt people when he does it. <laughs> Right, but it's just a little careless. Things happen when you're a young kid, right? And you want to try to find your place. Yeah. Um, but you have to know if you really. I mean, it really depends on your age too, right? You know, are you are you starting jujitsu at thirty or forty, or are you starting jujitsu at fifteen? Because at fifteen, you're a lot more durable sometimes than you mm -hmm. you are older. Uh, but picking partners that you know that you can push yourself with, that are gonna keep you safe. Is I think a really important thing looking at my career now compared to when I started if I could have done things differently I might not have rolled with some of the people that I rolled with or taken the chances that I took in the beginning right. I think some of it too is it's up here and you know what your environment your coaches you don't want to let them down right, or you don't yeah. want to let yourself down so you're putting yourself in positions that you're like well I can't tap here or I can't right. quit here it's hard to put your ego um, aside sometimes and just yes. tap and you have to yeah, okay, absolutely. you have to start doing it. If I had, if I could go back and talk to myself right now, I would say, look, it doesn't even matter that you won that stupid ass middle match. <laughs> it doesn't even matter that you did this, this, or this. Um, you can still win things, and you can still be successful and be smart and have a functioning back and have a functioning back. <laughs> um, you know, so picking the right partners and drilling and understanding. You know, how much, how much do you drill? And how much footage do you go watch when you're not training? Yeah. Um, just so that you know positions and you know, you know, it's like right now my big thing is, is trying to understand the leg locks and understanding the leg entanglements and getting through them without getting injured. Um, and I could either do one or I could do the white belt way of that, right? Where I could just go in there and start cranking on legs and see what the hell happens. Run and then I could probably have some real knee, quick. <laughs> knee injuries. Or I can do what I'm doing right now, which is watching footage, right? Going to people that know that and asking them questions, um, and then drilling these things. And when I'm getting caught in them, saying tap, and then telling them to put me back in the position and not to crank on the submission, and let me just work my way through it so I understand it better. Um, I think if we can communicate with your partners better and you can explain things better, have more success, it's like working smarter, instead of working harder. Right. I think a lot of the injuries, are probably 90% of the injuries, either come from just some accidental freak thing, like tripping and blowing your knee out or on a takedown or something, or they come from just not wanting to tap when you're in a bad position and you just probably should. Yeah. So. Yeah, the ego, just when you go against, because you, you got to roll hard to really get the experience. So when you have to do your hard rolling, when you're going against the spazzy white belt or the guy that is just, I'm going to, is just so strong he doesn't know his own strength you just got to tap tap early tap often i mean it's it, it's or get good. to places where you know right the situation 
lessens a lot. Right. Right. So like if you're doing the spazzy white belt on his feet, mm -hmm. well then clearly there's so many things that can happen. But if right. you could put yourself into a safer position, mm -hmm. even maybe if it is pulling side control or it is pit pulling mount in that moment, you're in class. Who gives yeah, a shit? Exactly. Um, but if you can put yourself in a position where, all right, I'm connected to the guy. The guy feels like he's safe because he's in a good position. Mm -hmm. And then I can get to a better place from here because I know I can escape this. And then I know I can get to where I want. But I'm reducing the chance of these crazy scenarios happening because he's right. just going to grab something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, and then, like, if, if you're still, if there's, you're running low on those kind of people that can you can roll with and be happy about it. Trying to find someone and just go out flow rolling, and I, again, that's another thing. We still got to find someone that's like, I agree to go twenty percent. But what is your twenty percent versus what is my twenty percent? Starts at twenty, and it ends right? At 90, it you ends know? at ninety. <laughs> as long as you can do that, and then not have an ego about it to be able to like, okay, I'm going. I sh all right. He stopped me here, so I'm gonna go. Oh, he stopped me here. Okay, well, he's just gonna start rolling. That's fine. I'll let him maneuver, and I'll just keep trying to find my way out of here. And when he gets to a good dominant position where he's comfortable, like you said, then I can start working out of it. And then that, that's, that's a really good way to start with it. Then know your body mechanics. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people don't pay attention to that, especially in the beginning. Understand the anatomy of your body a little bit. It doesn't take a lot for you to stretch, right? Spend an hour or two hours stretching and seeing what the limitations of your legs, right? Like going past your knee line or your shoulders, and, and understanding, look, if I get my body in any of those places, I need to tap. Right. You know, That way, I think a lot of times when you're new, you get your legs stuck somewhere, and you're like, eh, I don't know, maybe I can just roll this way. And you roll that way, and your knee blows out. Well, you know, like just understanding a little bit about the body mechanics and, and what should do and shouldn't do uh, might help save you some headache. Yep. Yeah. All right. And uh, we are getting close to time so uh, let's not have this stop again and you know ruin my life all right so let's uh, pick up the answer a little bit uh, are traditional warm-ups a waste of time I pay money to learn jiu-jitsu and not warm up you are correct yep done next you can go learn warm-ups on youtube.com at solo drills and from there when you're in class that's what you should be doing is learning jiu-jitsu yeah I you should be drilling kids, techniques so about where it ends yeah I, I, I do want I do really want to hit one thing on that that I actually did do last time so it, but it was the first time that we, we have to understand that sometimes too our our path of jujitsu like Chad how many places uh, have you trained at like totally like where so you know like you I were was a student with the American at. top team at one time okay um, and then I was basically yeah just American top team in the pedigo submission fighting all right running um, I've been into a couple different gyms though. I'm with Chad. Wherever he wins, I win. So same amount. I've got one. It's Pedigo. That's it. So. Okay. So I'm the person that actually, sadly enough, has the most experience with being at other gyms and, and training. It's not a silly question because sometimes those gyms they put so much emphasis on those warm ups that like. No, I've been to a lot of gyms yeah. that put a lot of emphasis. I mean, you spend the first. Well, it twenty burns minutes. a ton of the time up. It's, right, it's and easy. that's what they. You know, like. <laughs> I don't want to sound bad about this, but mm -hmm. that's why they exist in the kids' class. Yeah. That's why there is warm-ups. And I get it for kids because it makes sense to me. When I yeah. went and I added Absolutely. all that, they explained it to me really well. They said, look, kids need structure and kids need a routine. So by doing this every day, you're essentially teaching the kid to get out of bed, brush his teeth, do his homework, blah, 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 right? Jiu-jitsu is the same way. Like when you, people try to look at jiu-jitsu like it's a life thing, and I, I agree, like – it applies to life very well if you want it to. So with a kid's program, you are going to do the kid's warm-ups, you're going to do the stretching, and you can't get kids to do technique for an hour. Right. It's never going to happen. Like maybe maybe 1% of, of the kids yeah. Yeah. will do technique for an hour, and the rest aren't going to be there. Right. So I'm just laughing. your daughter that's probably sick that's going to be there for the entire hour. I, I'm laughing because, no joke, uh, in her advanced class, she has got rid of warm-ups. Who? Send you. Oh, She's yeah. doing 40 minutes of technique. But then how many kids sometimes are still really focused in there? I, I will say that her group is learning advanced techniques at an incredible rate because she basically was like, I don't want to do warm-ups anymore for the... And like, these are a little bit older kids. They're either correct. kids that... Um, yes. They're either kids that are a little bit older or they're See, sometimes kids that I kind of want to do that. 9 to 13 is right? what the like, age I Sometimes would I would like to split my classes... So that the six and seven year olds aren't with the ten and eleven. Well, and they're just olds. completely different worlds. Um, yeah. 
But it's kind of like hard for me. I right. need to probably. It's also hard for the parents too because I mean, then we're talking about setting up times, and then they have to figure out which time is going to work for them. With right now, it's nice. You, you just get one of the four days time. that works whatever best yeah. for you, yeah. and it's and, nice. But I agree, you know, like for the six, seven, eight year olds, warm ups and stretching, and that's good. And I do feel bad because I feel like some of the more advanced kids are are missing out on good technique, and that's why I try to say come to Wednesday's right. adult Absolutely. class. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I think that it's such a waste to have adult warm-ups in there. It's definitely a filler. Um, you know? It's a filler more than it's, you could be doing so many other drill warm-ups with another human body. And I don't necessarily I mean, think that it doesn't like help you. I mean, it's gonna help improve your cardio and some of those stuff a little bit too, but it's just not really, it's something you could do on your own, like you said. Ronnie's actually the one who changed Senyun's mind on it because in, Ron, in Ronnie's, uh, when we come to Tuesday, Ronnie's class and Senyun would always participate, we always start warm ups by hand fighting. And that's a good or, one. I think that's yeah, applicable. He would set up like I don't know, like what would you call it? like it was like American think, gladiators. He would set up like stations. Yeah, he set up some stations. Yeah, and we would do station work and like Sonya was like, Oh, we can do this? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah. So she's actually got that idea from Ronnie and was actually like, Oh I won't do that for kids. So that's actually the, the advanced kids that's now she does it. But again, I'm not, you know, saying anything, I'm just saying that that works for her. I think warm ups can be tweaked to still work for adults. Yeah. I just think the traditional style where you're. I just think why not do 50 Kimuras each? Right, why exactly. not do 50 X passes each? Or like each? the grip Why not do 100%. 50 front headlocks? Why not do 50 you know back takes to arm bars? Like there's you have a partner mm -hmm. that Which you don't get at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, so at home I can type exactly. in BJJ solo drills and I can say, look, on my carpet over there, I'm going to shrimp. I'm going to do a forward roll. I'm going right. to you know, but in class. I mean, and I can so see much. like you know some very very elementary style beginners that they don't know anything. They don't know what a shrimp is. I could see it yeah. being beneficial for some really newbie level people, but yeah, I mean there comes a time where it's just completely useless. I can't believe I just dragged this into a longer conversation <laughs> on that. That sucks. <laughs> oh. All right, worst competition experience. Yeah, uh, if you have watched episode one, you already know mine. Um, it, it really wasn't like because the beginning part of, of that um, the no gi part was a good experience for me. I lost my first match, but I won my second one, and I got a medal, and it was exciting for me. And that was my very first uh, jiu jitsu match, and it was a naga, and it wasn't because it was a naga; it was a rough experience. The rough experience was I did gi, not knowing that gi was a different animal. Um, I I wouldn't I, I wouldn't talk say you into that. You're fearlessly my fearless leader talked me into that. <laughs> I would say that was dude that gave bad advice for. Coaching, yeah, kids, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would still say that that was. It wasn't the entire event, but that was probably the worst part of it. Was the going out there and just like I had no idea what was gonna happen. And then, psh, um, every every other event I've done has, has been just about as you know rough because I'm just not that good at it. So I think that probably answers that. All right. Don't worry, Brandon's story's worse. Oh, good. Oh, Brandon, go, Brandon. Yeah, so my my worst jujitsu tournament experience was definitely blue belt pants. I think it might have been my it might have been my second time at pants actually at blue Nogi belt pants. Nogi, Nogi pants. pants yeah. And uh, it was during the COVID days, and I went out there. It was a pretty pretty even match. I think it came to the ref's decision. I lost, and I was exhausted. I went to the sidelines. I sat down in this aluminum folding chair, had my head down. And then this lady comes up to me from the sideline, tells me I can't sit in the chair, takes the chair away from me puts it somewhere else, doesn't even use it, and then I have to sit on the concrete for like 20 seconds till my next match where I go out and just get smoked easy. I can't believe you've left this out every, since we've done this three times, but you also cut your, cut your weight cut. Oh yeah, and yeah. I had to, I had to jog in the gymnasium to lose weight right before it. So you had to cut like rough. probably 15 pounds. Just that was a rough weight and cut. You ran, and you ran in flip flops and my oh, wife yeah, was I had, horrified. I had yeah. flip flops. She was like I trying to take that. her shoes off and be like, please wear my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I forgot, we forgot that three times. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason Thanks why. Thanks for throwing that one in. Yeah, why that's why. why. So, three would work. <laughs> so everyone can know how big of a piece of Chad Hawkins, Master Hawkins, go ahead. Oh man. Um. So like my third or fourth tournament ever, I forgot about this. Uh, I had staff and I didn't know it. I had staff on my butt cheek and uh, didn't even realize it. It's a true story. And uh, it, it was actually kind of swollen, right? And uh, I did this competition and I didn't realize 
that when you have staph, your heart rate starts to skyrocket. Oh. And uh, I had to get, I had to go to the hospital. I had to get ten really? shots. Yeah. In my ass. Yeah, my dad when he had staph, his heart because he had heart problems. That was something they were worried about. Yeah. So like my my heart rate and everything, like my I, my butt cheek was like swollen. It has a scar now on it. And they had to stick. <laughs> we will show we you. We will show you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is video. For our so OnlyFans.com. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, brought that up twice. But but no, like uh, yeah, I mean, I I just remember sitting there, and I like did the match, and then I passed out. Damn. And then I had to get like ten shots, and it wasn't penicillin because it was MRSA. Oh. oh yeah. So it was that could like, have been real bad. Yeah. So I had to go to the emergency <laughs> room, and uh, I had to you know I had these I had this really tough match and I couldn't get my heart rate to go down no I lost I it was a weird it was a sudden death tournament which I didn't like that or not sudden death it was double elimination tournament oh, okay and I didn't like that because it, it was kind of frustrating because I actually had made it to the finals and like the first or second guy that I that I beat you had to fight him again he came back yeah and it was a, they mixed white and blue belts together I was a white belt oh, and he was the only blue belt in the division and you already uh, beat him and I had already beat him. Did you tap him? I don't think so. I think I just beat him by like two points. Yeah. Um, so then the he, I think, beat me by two points. And you only, I think, get... And then I was done. Yeah. I didn't get to fight twice. Right. Yeah. So it kind of like sucked. Never understand that rule. When it's like double, but then when you get to the finals... Oh, so it's, it's so I was in a white belt division, and I lost to a blue belt, and then I had to go to the emergency room and get ten shots in my ass. <laughs> that's a, that's a bad and, experience. Uh, it's also one I don't think you said the other three times, so I think that's yeah, I don't great. Think so. That is that's that's pretty crazy. So last question, and I alluded on a previous episode that Brandon was ruining future segments. So, uh, do you have a plan A and a plan B, and what is the downside? So uh, this is as we've talked. Or we keep doing this. We probably shouldn't, but as we tried in the last attempt, we talked about um, plans having a plan A and plan B is, is just too broad. You need to have the you need to have systems in place. If plan A is is just pull guard, then you just got a guard pull with nothing. You don't know what you're gonna do after that. So plan plan A needs to be a guard pull with system with these systems in place, whether and all all systematically breaking down jiu jitsu systematically with um, starting with a sweet position, like for a full guard, starting with a sweet position and knowing all your counters and submissions and, and other sweeps off of it is the best way to go about it, especially when you're beginning. So um, I would say if you start working at um, being systematic with your jiu-jitsu, you're not only doing plans A and B, you're doing plans A through Z. And that's, that's where it is. So to answer my convoluted answer, summed up down to being yes, you need a plan A and a plan B and a Z and a D and an E and F and a G. I'm going to bring you guys' attention to that clock up there and then say, go ahead and answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so we're definitely way over time on this episode. But, yeah, I mean, everything Ronnie said is correct. You know, like uh, when you think about a plan, it's a little bit harder for you because you're like, well, I don't have a plan. It's, you know, I'm new. But when you think about it from a, a system, creating a system, uh, that's a little bit easier for you to break it down into just pieces. Um, you know, if you're going to, my system is I'm going to pull guard, get close guard, do the flower sweep series. That's the, the one, two, and three of that system. But then you have to look at it like, okay, I'm going to pull guard, but my guard's going to get passed. Right. So then my guard is, then I'm going to work on my side control frames, and I'm going to get back to my close guard, and then do my flower sweep. That's plan B with two extra systems added in there. Right. And if you could probably do that um, at white belt where you have you know one main goal with two backup goals um and then i think you'll have more success that if you fail because i think a lot of times people go for plan a and that plan a fails because they pull side control instead of guard or they pull guard and get it passed or they pull guard and they get half guard instead of close guard like they wanted so you should definitely have your main plan and then uh two of your black backup plans that are similar to that that still get you to the same end result but it's going to help you recover and stay on focus 
Yeah, I completely agree with everything they said, but just uh, limit the hesitation you have when you go out there. Commit to whatever your game plan is. Go out there, go for it, win, lose, or draw, you know? Just don't go out there, hesitate, get stuck in a bad position, and lose on time. Oh, my God, we're done. We did it. We did we're it. We're not done. And we are game. now going to go trash talk white belts, so stay tuned. Oh, yeah, tuned. that's right. Yeah, we have shit. to do a second. Oh, yeah. What? You were All right, welcome to Shit Talking White Belts. Um, today we have... Um, Chris Carpenter, who is one of our white belts um, within the organization. This is some video from a couple of years ago, or a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, and of him at a Fuji tournament. Um, we're going to watch these and uh, shit talk him because there is some issues that we have seen. There's All right. no issues. No issues, none. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so we're starting off in the clinch. Look, he does this. I don't even know what he does. He tries That's to do a, like a lat drop or a something. A great, beautiful guard pull. That was a guard pull from the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah. Total guard pull. <laughs> it's the judo way to pull guard. Did he get two there? No, I, they didn't give anyone points, which okay. I'm a little surprised on, <laughs> but we'll take it. I mean, he is trying to do yeah, like he a takes flower the, sweep. Yeah, he that almost was, went for the sweep. He's got the back. Oh, he goes for the arm bar. That was, yeah. that was slick. Yeah, it that was, was dangerous, but it was that slick. white belt power. That was a white pretty belt. decent arm bar from Turtle or it whatever. It was a great finish. All right, we'll go to this next one here. This is the Nogi. So we need to think about, on that last video too, at the end of this, what he could have done better. He uh, He's pulling guard. Which isn't like him. <laughs> yeah, and in this one here, he gave up the two. Yeah, I did see the ref give he the two. He's doing good at getting his hips off to the side mm -hmm. and not staying so square and flat. I feel like a lot of white belts do that. He's way not getting too his much. feet on him though. He's just kind of throwing his hips. He's got the triangle here though. Got the reverse triangle locked up, and he uses it to sweep. Comes out, and then he. The gets... stuff that works sometimes upsets me. <laughs> <laughs> he gets the two. Should get the six here, right? Or is no, it because he has the triangle? The, yeah. right. the, even if it's on the wrong side. He goes for the arm bar. He That's goes for arm the bar. wrong arm bar. <laughs> Let's come back here. He got an arm bar on, on the, the wrong, wrong side. Arm. So he's got the reverse triangle. So the dude's... The arm that's in. I take that back. I was wrong. No, he had the right arm bar. But yeah, he got that, got that turn the hips and finished that one. It wasn't bad. Yeah, the big the big thing, just like you said, Chad, on, on that one, he really needs the guard pull. He, I think he started looking for the takedown and then opted for the guard pull. And but he it, gave up the but two. But he gave up the two. I think people just don't have a game plan like we talked about in some of the episodes. Is is mm -hmm. They don't know what to do, right? They're like, I want to play top, but then as soon as they want to start playing top, they get scared and they pull guard. I don't think they commit to it either. Whenever oh, They, they don't step out there willing to go for it, win or lose. They just feel it out, and then they're like, oh, it's not working, and then they try to go to something else. And Let's bring up the third one here. Yeah. These Good videos thing. are a little bit long, but we'll get through them quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this, I believe, must have been his final. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, he double-golded. So this is his finals in gi, or no gi. So now he's getting a little bit better right now. He's a little he's, more calm. That's yeah, a good like, underhook. He's not going right to guard right now. Oh, huh? well, yeah. He grabbed oh. the guillotine and stuck Got to it. Got the sweep. Almost had a Darce or something there. Oh, we wow. tapped. I, yeah. That was good. That you was know, that pretty was, good. That was a good sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought he was going to wrestle, and then the guy kind of shot. He stopped the shot. Got yeah. the front headlock. And, that yeah. underhook really saved him, and then he jumped on the neck. Did um, he give him points for the takedown there, too? Should have. I mean, you should have got two points. I didn't necessarily watch. We could probably watch the video since it wasn't... Too long. Yeah, he stops he the shot under, well. He's like, right gets the gets the head. He gets the head, and then he kind of... He almost goes for the sweep instead of the submission, too. No, he never gave him the two. He didn't give him the two, but he could have. I think yeah, the he two could have been there. Should have. I mean, I mean, you I know, whether know what you pull that was, butterfly guard and you sweep him over your head and, and end up, you know, on top, you're still getting the two points no matter what, as long yeah. as the guy wasn't shooting when he did it, which he wasn't. Right. So he already stopped the shot. Yeah, that was a good. that was a good one. Yeah. It was definitely better from the first one. <laughs> yes. It's been an improvement in this white belt's life. Yes, there are absolutely videos. We don't know this white belt. We've never met him. No, <laughs> thanks for the footage. <laughs> um, yeah, is there, do we want to go back to the gi one? Because we kind of went through that one a little quick. Here we go, Chris. 
So yeah, I don't really understand what he's doing here, but he could have got his back taken. He tries for the lat drop. It looks right, like to but me. He, he crosses the body line when he does it, like an yeah. arm drag slash lat drop. Yeah, he was looking for almost like that uh, a judo Sionagi, but you're supposed to turn your back and get underneath him and flip him over the shoulder, but okay, yeah, that didn't happen. I mean, this this other white belt could have literally just stepped right over or taken the back at any moment that he wanted to if he just would have clasped on and come around correctly. But yeah, people that do throws like that, they they think that it's I got my hand positions in the right spot now I just turn and go, but you got to get your hips underneath them to be able to yeah. get under them to be able to. Throw That's them. where all the power comes from. Exactly. So yeah, besides that, I saw improvement in this gentleman's life throughout the sequence of his. Was videos. this all the same day as well? Yes, this was all. Yeah, because yeah, B first. And I remember he said he was going to go to this event. Yeah, this was in Kentucky, if I remember right. He almost gets the like arm crush over there. Yeah. That right there is nice. Though. Yeah, is, that's real nice. Is super pretty. Yeah. All right. Well, I would say that's a good sequence right there. We uh, need you guys to like our page, subscribe to our channel, and keep watching our content. And keep sending us videos, especially if you want us to critique them and, and also shit talk you just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, any you shitty know, white belts you know. Yeah, it, videos of you losing. Yeah, all the ones of you winning. I mean, I mean, you already won. What do you <laughs> need to learn? Quality. Videos. Qualities would be helpful too. <laughs> We're not being picky here, but no. we are sponsored by Carfox. No. No, so exactly. we expect a better quality of life. Right there. He's the man. He's going to eat me because not that would be good quality. Don't mistake it. The Fox. Just the cardboard Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and just that one. It's not the whole organization. This All right. Have a great day. <laughs>